Europa FM, pe aceeași frecvență cu tine. President Roberta Metzola, thank you very much for giving us this interview here in Bucharest. Probably you know we Romanians are much worried about what Russians are doing in Ukraine because you know we have lived under communism for decades. So, um, as I noticed, you are in touch with Ukrainian, with Kiev all the time. Uh, based on what information you have and also on what you feel, like human being, is there any real uh, chance for peace in the next months or we are closer than a total war between Russia and NATO at this moment? I would always hope for peace, especially in these days uh, of Christmas where Ukrainian families should be given the possibility, should have the possibility of what they enjoyed only last year, uh, to spend the time with their families, to be able to have basic amenities like heating, light, clean water in their homes, but that is not the case. On the 24th of February, Russia illegally, uh, unprovokedly, brutally launched an invasion into Ukraine, and that invasion has only escalated since. But they underestimated one thing, they underestimated the unity of the European Union, they underestimated the immediate solidarity shown by countries such as Romania, and I would like to commend Romania on this. They underestimated the resolve of Ukrainians to fight for their country, fundamental rights, territorial integrity, sovereignty. Peace should come with liberty, peace should come with dignity, peace should come with security. When those three um, uh, conditions are met, when Russia withdraws from Ukrainian territory, then we can talk of peace. My fear is that this is going to be protracted. The winter is long, it will be cold. 2023 will be once again a very difficult year. But my commitment is that we will stand with Ukraine. I am in daily contact with them. We have a very good relationship with the Ukrainian parliament as a European parliament. We work with them, we support them, both legally, politically, financially. I think that they can be able to continue to rely on the strongest European support from us. President Zelensky is talking lately about the, the peace process, but in the same time, European leaders are talking about reconstruction. Even the Russians are uh, uh, bombarding all the time, every, almost every day, Ukraine. So... Uh, it's Let's say it, it is a multifaceted process. First of all, Ukraine is on the tr track to become an EU member state, which means that there are milestones that I must again commend Ukraine for the success with which they are meeting those milestones. Uh, there are discussions of having access to pre-accession funds, programs. You and I both know the transformative effect that EU membership has on a country like ours. My country joined in 2004, your country joined in 2007. So while we are talking of a country joining the European Union, we are also talking about a country that is under heavy daily bombardment. And Russia is also targeting critical infrastructure. It's like they want to squeeze out Ukrainians from their homes, from their schools where they are sheltering. So we have to also be prepared for a new influx of Ukrainians into Romania, into other countries, into the European Union territory. That's what we're also preparing for. So in a way, our response, besides direct financial assistance for Ukraine, military and logistical aid, collection of generators, military weapons, air defense systems, etc., where all the G7 partners, the EU, NATO allies are very much involved. We also have to talk about what happens to a country that needs to be kept going, costs up to six billion per month for Ukraine to be kept going, while at the same time, yes, reconstruction, once the war is over. This was my next question. What do you know about the potential flux of refugee from Ukraine now, a new one? There are millions of Ukrainians here in European Union now, but the winter... Yes. We are talking, first of all, at about 8 million Ukrainians that are internally displaced in Ukraine, around Odessa and the Kiev area. Uh, once the Ru Russians continue to bombard specifically places where there are internally displaced people as well, 
then those people will have no choice but once again to move and to flock into the other European countries, but also, for example, Moldova. We saw the influx at the beginning of the war. Then we started to see Ukrainians going back. We started to see Ukrainians staying in the European Union, starting their second uh, academic year, children starting their second ac academic year. I think they have integrated wonderfully. I met yesterday here a, a startup, young people who have looked for giving jobs to Ukrainians on a platform and they've had a wonderful response. So I think we need to be prepared for once again our humanitarian solidarity to kick in and to show that we don't only open our heart but also our homes for Ukrainians. But there is financial assistance for that. So the European Union triggered a mechanism that I thought would never be triggered, which is when an influx of people comes into the European Union, member states get help. That has been triggered almost immediately since the invasion. It continues to apply, so assistance is there. We need to continue to carry the responsibility collectively also for this illegal invasion. And Romania received money from the European Union Absolutely for, for assisting uh, Ukrainians. President Metsola, I would like to talk a little bit about Schengen. Yes. Uh, you notice probably that Romanians are very disappointed. <laughs> you said this. Uh, in your opinion, what should do uh, the European institution and also Romania um, do to convince Austria to accept Romania and Bulgaria in Schengen next year? This has dominated, as you can imagine, my trip here and uh, with reason. Uh, the sense of frustration and disappointment is felt you feel it. by everybody. And I wouldn't blame anybody who feels that disappointment and frustration. What should have been a, 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 give, a, a giveaway, so to speak, something that nobody would take, for, would, would doubt, 11 years ago, is still on the table today. That disappointment has to turn into optimism that in 2023 there will be an agreement. This is not a gift for Romania. It benefits the whole of the, of the European Union, from a security point of view, from a political point of view. Romanian citizens should be tre treated equally. There is no two levels of European Union anymore. There is no old and new Europe anymore, as I said before the Romanian Parliament yesterday. From the European Parliament, you can expect continued, as has been from day one, full solidarity, but also full pressure on every country that continues to have questions or doubts. I would say, let's look at 2023 as the year in which Romania joins the Schengen area. So the response would be the continued pressure on Austria? The response could be the, the continued pressure on every single country that could have questions okay. that need to be answered. And I say this also in the context of Bulgaria. So Romania and Bulgaria that should join the Schengen area in 2023. If there are questions, as they have been answered before, they will continue to be answered. But for me, there are no more questions to be asked, let me be clear. For me, Romania um, and Bulgaria should join the Schengen area and we should look at 2023 as the year that that happens. Together. Should have happened in 2022, but has to happen in 2023. Okay, the next question is about the corruption file in the European Parliament. Yes. In a recent interview for Libertate newspaper, Christian Bouchoy, who is a Romanian member of European Parliament, admitted he was in Qatar in uh, 2020, uh, but the costs were supported not by himself or by the European Parliament, uh, but uh, uh, by um, Qatar. So, uh, it was wrong. Are you asking me or are yes. you telling me? Yes, I, I'm telling you and I, I'm asking you if it yes. was okay or not uh, that the cost was supported by Qatar and not by... Himself. So this is something that we are looking into and this specific case has not reached me yet, but it is something that we are looking into because there have been too many, let's say, trips, whether declared or undeclared, there are so-called friendship groups in the European Parliament whereby members of Parliament have traditionally travelled to a country and who knows what happened when they were there. So while I'm going to be very clear on everybody being presumed in, uh, uh, innocent, while the European Parliament will do everything in order to cooperate with the Belgian judicial and law enforcement, but also with law enforcement and judicial authorities in other countries, we will look into any um, gaps that exist and any irregularities to be looked into. So this is something that is a big situation. It is a very difficult one. 
we have tools and systems in place, but if they were abused or if they need to be tightened, then we will do precisely that in January. It was a shock for me to go through this. This is a parliament that has built trust as a co-legislator, as a serious institution, as one founded on democracy and the rule of law. I do not want individual instances to look away from the very hard work that so many members of the European Parliament do. And here I also want to salute the work of Romanian members of the European Parliament. They are strong political legislative actors that I work very well with and you would, can ask this of any colleague in the European Parliament of the influence and real work done by also Romanian me members of the European Parliament. But do you know if there are Romanians under investigation now? I cannot tell you that. Uh, it has not been brought to my attention. That's what I can say. Thank you very much for this interview. Thank you. Europa FM, pe aceeași frecvență cu tine.